Hi, welcome to the National Cuisine's Choice Online News. Today we have a very distinguished guest with me. He's none other than Mr. Johnny Chan, and uh, he's the owner of two uh, of two men one passion uh, winery in China, and he has uh, actually invented the first traceable Chinese wine in the world. And he also will discuss with us about the Chinese food uh, and trends uh, in China alone itself. Mr. Johnny, uh, thank you for joining us here at the National Cuisine's Choice. Please tell us more about the, Chi the Chinese food trend right now. I, I believe the China is such a huge continent. And like everybody or everywhere in the world, I mean, the, the, everything is changing so fast. Especially in China because the new development that old buildings are being pulled down and where the basic food came from uh, in the streets. So apparently they are and also the, the urbanization of the country, I mean there are more people moving into town uh, but they just want enough space to accommodate I'm the newcomers. So but at the same time, because people are moving around, so they are bringing different flavors to different areas of the country. I mean, like, for instance, in Hong Kong, in the, in the south of China, I mean, food usually is quite mild. It's not spicy. But right now, Sichuan food, spicy and more powerful flavor, are become popular in the south. So at the same time, I believe that I live in Beijing also, so I, I can see that there are more food from the southern of China now in Beijing. So for me, I mean, I can also go to my comfort food in the north. So I think it's a mix of a change of different province, different flavor, different style. I mean, all around the country. And about street food in China. Um has there been a lot of changes? And is street food in China the culture? So is it disappearing? It is. I, I assume it's. It's not. You cannot stop that. And that's what exactly. I mean, this congress is all about. And in 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 China, because a lot of things involve more official uh, controls. I mean, it's not like in Singapore or in other countries. Entrepreneurial, I mean, they can set up it's like food courts and all that. But China is more officially dominated. So when there's a certain project, you need to go through the bureaucracy, I mean, all, all those. So it make it, I think, more typical in China to preserve, I mean, tradition of street food. So to speak, but they are, they are, they are people, they are officials, they are cities in China. They have all these festivals going on. I mean, every season. But how to do to the extent of Singapore? That is a quest. Uh, how is China going to uh, preserve all this street food culture? And what is uh, Chinese culture? Because China is such a big continent with many cultures, uh, so could you uh, give us some insights? I, I wish I could speak for the country, but my dream would be that because, because street food, to start with, I think it, it was survival. And street food actually is home cooking. I mean, they don't, they, they, they was not born in the streets because we need to survive, but street food represents that particular area. I mean, agriculture, I mean, tradition, religious. Because food involved in a lot of different aspects. Like, I mean, a certain area they, they don't eat beef, they don't eat pork, uh, they are vegetarian. So street food represent really the whole culture of that particular area. But the environmental changes, I mean, whether warming up uh, produce are not the same anymore, economical reasons, rents are too high. So there's many, many elements which really changing the flavor, the taste in the, in, in the living hood. 
of everybody. What are the uh, key five flavors or ingredients that Chinese in China usually use for, for home cooking or street food cooking that you come across in China itself? In China, we talk about, I mean, sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and I think the fifth one is depends on whatever you like to put that, throw that in. Uh, uh, and, but are there, are there five uh, key ingredients like salt, pepper, or other, other unique ingredients that we cannot, we cannot find outside of China? Not really, because but, I mean, like pepper. I mean, a lot of the things. I mean, are, are sort of like immigrate into China years ago. So I really feel in China. I mean, some of the spices. But even now, there are farms, which you can have almost everything in China. And even caviar, farm sturgeon. China is now one of the top countries producing caviars in the world. What are the three key challenges that China is facing in trying to preserve street food? I really feel the modernization of the city, the pulling down of the old part of the town. I think that is the first really difficult task. Uh, there are still old towns around, but they are being pulled down very fast. And also, I mean, like, I think that's the problem everywhere. That the street food vendors used to make a living, and but now they are they are new generations. They send them to school. They send them to better educations, and very few of them like to return to do the same thing in the streets. The third, I can't think of the third. I think I think there are only two, and those two are enough problems for us to resolve. And that's what the Congress for now. Tell us more about uh, your winery, your, your latest invention in the, in the wine, uh, Two Men and One Passion, is that correct? Uh, actually, that, that is a slogan because ah. my, my partner, my very good friend from Chile, and Johnny Lucy, and the two of us, we have this dream. We believe China can produce good wine. And I think we, we just did that. And I know there's no limit, but our wine, 1421, and it's already in Australia, in Switzerland, in Hong Kong, in Macau. Uh, and so could you tell us more about your, your first traceable Chinese wine that you've made in the world, and what's the, the name of the brand? The 1421 is the name. 1421 is the year where Zheng He, in the Ming Dynasty, he led the largest fleet to sail around the world. And, and that, today, I believe it's a dream of, of, of many people. Mm. And for, for us, our dream is to bring the Chinese wine into the international community. And we believe that every product should be faithful to its own terra. So our 1421 is exactly like that. I mean, we don't produce a French wine. We can't produce an Italian wine. We produce a Chinese wine. Mm -hmm. And being traceable, we're very proud of that. And so speaking about being the first traceable Chinese wine in the world, what is, uh, the, how important is this for you? Why do you want to create uh, traceable uh, Chinese wine? It, uh, then could you tell us more? Because nowadays, it's not just China. It's globally food safety, drink safety. We all want to know from the farm to the fork to the table. And the traceable system, uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's a system, a program from, from Europe. And they apply that first in China because the urgent need in, in, in the country for such a system. And it's not just to understand, okay, this is the wine from that vineyard to your table. Mm -hmm. The whole process. Every process has to be recognized and endorsed, certified by international good agricultural practice. In the production process, it has to be certified by international food safety standard. 
So those are the key elements which make the traceable wine mm. different. What is good day hua to you? And have you paired uh, your wines with street food in China? And uh, what is good, a good street food uh, that will pair with your good wine? 1421 for me is a dream that because Chinese food or Asian food, I mean, there are so many different tastes yeah. on the same table. We can't say, okay, we're going to have a piece of solo steak, then, okay, this is uh, Wagyu, this is which great, so they're more flavor, we're going to have a more, more powerful wine to pair with this piece of meat. On the Chinese dining table, they are sweet, sour, I mean, every kind of flavor. So for me, it's just two wines, a white and a red, which is simple, it will clean your palate, then you feel like to, to have your next bite again. So I, I think 1421 is, is really mean for like for all kind of food. What would you recommend for first time travelers going to China when they pair uh, your wine 1421 red and white uh, with Chinese food? Is there uh, a recommendation? Like let, let's say they were, they were to go to Beijing uh, what, what sort of uh, food can, can you pair with 1421? Because people keep saying red wine for red meat, white wine for white meat. Mm -hmm. But I've, I really found 1421. I, I eat Beijing duck with 1421 Chardonnay. I eat fish with the coming of Sauvignon because it, it's, it's simple, it's fresh. Uh, but I always remind my friends to make sure the wine they are at the right temperature, either the white or the red, because I, I find a lot of places or, or, or who are drinking wine, unfortunately, I mean, we do not really look up to the temperature of the wine. And that, I feel, is the first key to enjoying a wine anyway. What's next for you? Next for me, yes. I... For, for your wines and... I, I have some wine in the French oak barrel and I'm going to bottle that wine in the next two months and I look forward to share the wine with people because I believe good wine should be shared. And, and how long is the shelf life for your wines? Can they be kept for the next 10, 20, 30 years? At, at, at this phase, my experience with my own wine now, I mean like uh, the 1421 Chardonnay 2010, I mean they are still drinking very fresh very crips. So I would say even the Chardonnay was usually white wine, they don't have that much of a long shelf life. The Chardonnay should be for five years and the Cabernet Sauvignon for six, seven years as to why they are now. For, for more information, how can our viewers uh, uh, find you in your company? Do you have a website or Facebook? Click 1421wines.com there you go, folks. Uh, thank you for watching uh, this uh, series uh, with you know uh, with our founder, uh, Mr. Johnny Chan, for 1421 uh, Winery in China. And uh, once again, thank you for joining me. I'm Robin Steinberg here at the National Beer's Choice. Have a good week ahead. And once again, don't forget, uh, wines from China are coming out really good. Cheers.